we're now going to be entering uh, a sales receipts which are going to be the sales items that we we make on like a cash based system and then we will make the deposit so what do we expect to happen sales receipts we expect to be increasing not cash because we're going to put it into that undeposited funds like account or funds to be deposited account or payments to deposit i think they're going to call it and then the other side is going to go into the revenue account and then when we deposit it we're going to take it out of the clearing account and put it into the checking account let's go to the tab to the left to do this quick look at the flow chart just remember that if you're on the customer cycle we expect money to be going into our checking account at the end of the cycle in some way shape or form the easiest method or cycle we could have is if we were in like gig work getting paid by like youtube or something and we just wait till it clears the bank possibly recording with bank feeds using just a deposit form and that would be the easiest thing to do although it's not really a full service accounting system but it would be nice to do if we're in a, that type of industry but a step away from that is what we're going to do now the sales receipt form meaning it's still on a cash based system we're not tracking accounts receivable but we're doing a full service cash based system because we have to typically because we're going to get receipts from a customer at like a cash register for example and then we want to be able to check the sales receipts for the day versus the cash that we have or the the credit cards versus the grouping of the credit cards and then we're going to physically make the deposit into the bank and we want our deposit in our books to match what we physically deposit into the banks that's why it's a bit more of a challenge and you can't just rely on the bank feeds and then the step away from that would be the accrual method in which case we have to track the accounts receivable and enter an invoice track the accounts receivable receive the payment and then deposit remember that these two forms the the receive payment and the sales receipt represent us receiving money and both of them we can either put directly into the checking account however we might want to use that undeposited funds like account payments to deposit to, as a clearing account to help us to then group the deposits in our system in the same format as will be put into the bank either by us with physical checks or the cash that we physically put into the bank in a group or with the credit cards where the credit card company might group the deposits in a, a way to group multiple deposits together or multiple sales in one deposit that goes into our checking account okay so let's go back on over i'm going to say new on the left we're going to go into the sales receipt sales receipt we're matching we imagine whenever we're at the sales receipt we're at like a check register in our shop in like our guitar shop and then garcia we're going to say garcia we're going to have a new customer garcia guitars guitars is going to be the new customer very creative name that i came up with with that one i feel like or our, our, our team came up with a really creative name on that one garcia guitars because it has two g's so that's why it's cool anyways we'll save that one obviously we might want their email address and whatnot but it's not as important because if we're making the sale in the shop we might not even get their name because we're at the cash register if it was a food truck or something we probably wouldn't get their name we would just have a generic customer called customers it's because no one wants to give us their name so that we can give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich although no one orders peanut butter and you know whatever sandwich we're making whatever you get what i'm saying so then the date is going to be let's make the date let's go with 02223 for the date and then this populates automatically and then the location is necessary for the sales tax calculation no tags payment method i'm just going to keep going with cash to imagine us grouping it remember that if we got an actual check we would imagine that the check is something that would hit our bank account in the same amount as we would enter for the actual sale because they would so in that case we could use a deposit directly into the checking account but if you're doing if you're working at a sales register you're, you're thinking i might get paid by cash check or credit card and so you probably want to keep your deposit system the same all the time meaning i'm going to put everything into undeposited funds or payments to deposit the clearing account and not try to pick and choose when I want to put it into the checking account or not, right? Because if I got cash, then for sure, I, or almost certainly, I don't want to put it directly into the checking account because when I make the deposit physically into the bank, 
I'm gonna group multiple sales together at one time and that'll mess up my bank reconciliation. Same with the credit card here. If I get a credit card, then the credit card company might group multiple sales together and deposit them into my checking account in some grouped format. I wanna match that on my end. So I'm just gonna say cash for the example problem and we're not gonna put it indirectly into the checking account here. We're gonna put it into the clearing account. Just remember also that if you did put it into the cash account, then you also have the added kind of little bit of a complication in that in your transaction detail, you'll have sales receipts that will increase your checking account as opposed to just deposits and possibly transfers. Not a big deal if you wanna do that, but you gotta kind of remember that it's another little sorting issue that, that could, I like to have all the increases be basically deposits in my checking account, then it's easy to know what the increases are. They're all deposit transactions, but whatever. So now we're gonna go down here and we're gonna add the stuff, the stuff that was purchased. So we're gonna say it's an EPSP is one of the things that were purchased. So we've got that one. And so I'm gonna say we've got how many of those? Two of those I'm gonna say gets us to the 1200. It is a taxable item. And then the next one, the next line is gonna be an ELP, an ELP, which we set up in a prior presentation. This is an Epiphone Les Paul. And we're gonna say that, let's say we sell two of those too. So that comes out to the sales of 2,200. And then the tax is uh, being applied based on the location. Let me, I had to click down here for it to reformat and calculate based on location, but I'm gonna change it to our generic problem of just the 5%. You could do that if you wanna do the generic problem by changing the math here and just override it to 5% or I set up this another item of just 5% so I can make it generic and not related to just California. So you can just see the concept and follow along no matter where you are. So then we've got the three, the 2310. Uh, and so that looks good. So what's this gonna do? It's a sales receipt. So it's gonna increase some kind of cash account. This is gonna go for us into the clearing account like undeposited funds, payments to deposit. That's for the full amount, 2310. The other side's gonna go into revenue. 2,200, the difference, the sales tax is not gonna be revenue because we're just a tax collector. They forced us to collect taxes for that one. They said, you want we want protection money and you gotta give us 5%. And we're like, okay. So then we gotta increase the payable account of, of a liability of 110. And then also we're gonna have the inventory go down, not by the amounts on here, but by the cost, which is known because we have a perpetual inventory system that was set up by the items that we put in place and the cost of goods sold is gonna go up by that same amount, the expense account related to us consuming the inventory, the net impact income impact is gonna be income minus the cost of goods sold. And the, the subledger for inventory is also going to go down by unit, not just by the cost. Okay, that's a lot of action. Let's save it and close it and check it out.